when we start these, <laughs> I usually like to do like a grounding yeah. exercise. And I think what the grounding exercise is, is we all just take a moment of silence and listen to these birds. I love it. So pretty. That, that was like 30 seconds, actually. I know. Yeah. Yes. We also have a monkey. I don't know if you heard that one. <laughs> it's so crazy because we live like 15 minutes outside the city, but I, like we moved out here and I've never heard birds like this. It sounds like in the morning, it sounds like we're in a jungle. It's crazy. It's so awesome. So yeah. you're in Nashville, Tennessee. Amazing. So uh, good to see you guys again, Taylor and Joey of uh hey. Rome after years spent rising through the ranks of the independent rock scene roanoke has grown into a seasoned road tested rock outfit retaining an affinity for storytelling and rich vocal harmony that has won over audiences time and again roanoke's robust touring schedule has sharpened the skills with which this quintet crafts their songs a sound at once timeless and youthful seamlessly blending a 70s aesthetic with modern sensibility and mysticism. Uh, no Depression describes Roanoke's music as ageless and expressive, so strikingly effusive it practically demands attention. And Pace Magazine ranked their EP, Where I Roam, as one of the top 10 EPs of 2018. Recent Roanoke highlights include a stint as Nashville independent radio station, Lightning 100's Artist of the Week, in addition to headlining the station's weekly program, Nashville Sunday Night broadcast live from the stage at the venerable third in lindsley from merle fest to Sunfest, from new york's mercury lounge to nashville's historic exit in roanoke continues to thrill audiences with their captivating live show and uh beautifully written there and thank you modern sensibility and mysticism jumped up at me and ageless and expressive and storytelling and of course Blending a 70s aesthetic with modern sensibility mysticism, which is why I wore the shirt today. I'm inspired. so impressed with the shirt. Yeah, it's inspired it's like by uh spot on. Yeah, your music and 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 your look and your feel. And uh you all have like that like 70s kind of early Fleetwood Mac days mixed with some Neil Young and Heck yeah. Uh, you know, Crosby, Seals, Nash, and some Allman Brothers in there, and some of my favorite bands growing up listening to my dad play guitar, the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you really like fuse it up with that, as you call that modern sensibility. Um, Thanks. And it's good to see you guys again, because we've done this before on an Instagram Live, and you've done a few takeovers for Medicine Box, and touring on the road and really the big topic today we wanted to explore is you know how you've sustained uh through the pandemic and what i call the pandemic blues and uh we're all in this together we were all in it together and we're still kind of coming out on the other side but um really what kept you guys going um as being you know, the, the road musicians that you are all the way from Nashville to New York and beyond. Um, and yeah. were, were you able to tour? Like what, what you guys do? I, I, I can say, honestly, I'm really, well, first of all, this, um, I'm really excited about this conversation today. I'm really excited to talk to you all. I, li I love Madison Box. I, lo I love what y'all stand for. Absolutely. Um, but to tell you the truth, man, it's one of those things where like you, you make a commitment to move to a new city and you kind of don't have anything else to do because you came here to do that. So it's like, well, if I don't just keep doing it, then I don't know what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? There's definitely times throughout this uh, pandemic and the quarantine where I kind of felt crazy for continuing to do it. But but it just was the only thing that I was doing and the only thing I kind of had going for me and us. You know what I mean? So it, it that's. So, and th there were lulls, you know what I mean? There were lulls where I didn't create as much, but every single time I came back to creating, I was just like, oh yeah, this is amazing. And it forced me to get back in touch with, with the reason I started creating, which is I love it. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, for whatever reason, 
um, I, when you, when you put so much time into something, it becomes such a part of your like, personal expression that without it, you kind of, you feel stunted in a way, you know what I mean? So some of it was just a pursuit of not losing it. <laughs> you know, it was some of that a little bit. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great reflection, Joey. It's, it's, um, almost like the, the noise and the distractions that are around us at all times, just being a human, um, you're able to kind of subside that and get back to your roots, right? Figure out like, mm -hmm. this is what you love to do. You love to play music. You love to create. And you've chased that uh, pursuit of passion or happiness, creativity, whatever it might be for you, um, all the way to Nashville. Where'd you, where'd you move from? I moved from West Palm Beach, Florida, um, on the East Coast of Southern Florida. About so For some folks that are familiar, it's about 45 minutes north of Miami. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, from Michigan. Yeah, I'm from Michigan. And yeah, kind of met in the middle there. <laughs> how did you both meet from Michigan and Florida? Well, m music, you know, music brought us both together. You know, that's the generalization, but we both met. We were working downtown waiting tables on 2nd Avenue. Um, in Nashville? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, seven years ago now? Yeah, at a blues club. Yeah, we started, like, the, the funny thing in Nashville, especially when everybody, um, when you first move there, it's it's always, hey, we should write together. Right. <laughs> so like, that's exactly how it started out, too. It was like, hey, we should write together. And then, um, yeah, we started writing together and singing together and just kept doing it. Cool. Yeah. That, that's another interesting topic to explore is, you know, I know a lot of musicians um, sustain themselves by working in the food and beverage industry. Mm -hmm. right? It's a little extra cash and you're able to, you know, create during the day and go sling drinks or wait some tables at night. And that was also taken away from yeah. well, any food and beverage worker, but were you both uh, also working in the food and beverage industry as when COVID hit or have you kind of made it to a place where your music is sustaining uh, your livelihood? We were both actually working at coffee shops. So basically we would um, work at our different coffee shops uh, during the week and then go on the road during the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. My situation was kind of crazy because the tornado hit my coffee shop that I was working at like two weeks before the pandemic hit. Um, so I wasn't working already for a while. Um, and Joey's still at the coffee shop. I've gone through a few different job changes since the pandemic. Um, but yeah, that was that was really bizarre. Um, Cause like you said, that is that is very much Nashville. Like every, you know, everybody, you walk into a restaurant and your waiter is a musician. <laughs> and yeah. uh, having both of those kind of, and honestly, it's a great way to make connections and, and talk to people and collaborate with people. Absolutely. Um, you see your friends there, you know, working at the coffee shop and so that was really bizarre that, yeah, both of those things were just kind of, and so many people lost, you know, so many things. And yeah, that was, it was crazy for us not being able to go on the road. And yeah, the schedule went, we, we played a show at, um, at Basement East, which is like owned by a, a record store. That's like their big premier venue. And they, uh, it's, it's an awesome venue. So we played a show there that night uh, and then the tornado literally ripped that venue down like 15 minutes after we loaded our stuff down into the cars and we drove home. And then 15 minutes after we left, it ripped the entire venue down to the ground. And then, so the next day we came back to the same place that we played at and we tried to help clean up. And um, it was just kind of useless. It was just such a, you know, I mean, you, work, you can't clean up after a tornado, you know what I mean? It takes mm -hmm. years for a community to recover after that. And then, you know, two weeks after that, it was, it was Kumbaya and everyone's donating uh, food and clothing. We played a benefit show. We played a benefit <laughs> show and everyone's trying to come together. Everyone's and hugging. Community. And, like, and yeah. the pandemic and everyone's like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> you it know what crazy. I mean? So it, it, it was pretty wild, like the juxtaposition that happened in just, you know, three weeks time. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what did you, what did you both do? You know, everyone responded differently mm -hmm. to COVID. Some people isolated and, and got caught up in the, the fear-based propaganda of, of COVID and watching the mm -hmm. news and, you know, conspiracy theories and, and such. Um, or other people just like went, went deep into, 
maybe meditation and, and yeah. prioritize your life and uh, spent more time at home with the, the children and figured out how to work from home. Uh, was it, was there any uh, difference of like, you know, what your day to day was and, and what were some of the, I, I guess the tactics that, that you used to adapt to this new lifestyle. As, yeah. But as I from could, a musical standpoint, from it, did it help with your creative process? You know, being for able sure. To, let's just yeah. Make it was it was a it was I I ebbed and flowed so much. Like in the beginning, we went to Joey's family because they live four hours away in the mountains in Georgia. Um, so we stayed there for a little bit, and then we moved into a new house here in Nashville, and we kind of took. Sorry. sorry. So loud. Um, it was kind of crazy because it was like in the beginning, we didn't like nobody knew when it was going to end. So it was like, oh, maybe just it kind of felt like, oh, just wait it out for a little bit and it'll end, you know. So we isolated and, you know, I definitely dove a lot into like meditation and self-care um, and plant medicine. Um, and I nice <laughs> and um, <laughs> and trying to take care of myself. Um, I wasn't feeling creative in any way when it first happened. I was like, awesome. You know, I'm going to at least try to take advantage of this and have all this time to create. And I just was feeling so uninspired and I barely wrote anything over this pandemic. And I talked to a lot of musicians who experienced a similar thing. Um, I wanted it. What I think a, a lot of musicians kind of took it as a break, a much, a very well-deserved break. Musicians work mm -hmm. their butts off. Um, and they, you know, don't have a lot of time to, uh, see family and stuff like that. Um, Which is but, great, we, but the only we, problem with taking a break as a musician is nothing gets done. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. And we, so I thought it'd be really cool because we used to connect to people like during, through live yeah. shows. And so, um, and we weren't, um, we didn't spend a whole lot of time online. We love the live show thing. We love to go out on the road and meet people. So I, I think that we took this time to really connect to people through social media, um, through uh, live streams, um, through our trip to New Mexico. Um, so that was really interesting, trying to still have that connection you feel with the audience at a live show and trying to like create that through a screen was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and it, it sometimes worked out, sometimes didn't. Um, but yeah, we definitely have been searching and searching for ways to keep um, releasing music and connecting to to people listening to our music. That's amazing. And thinking of like that recreation of the live show uh, through the screen. I mean, you couldn't yeah. set it any better. I mean, it's, <laughs> there's no need to put fluff around that. But yeah, we I believe we met through like kind of the masters of doing that jam in the van, right? Uh huh. Yeah. And they're love them <laughs> yeah shout shout out to jake and um, seriously they're seriously, so great they're great i love those they've, guys they've figured out how how to do that really like recreate exactly that. no they Much really life. did and i remember them really just hustling and and um putting together quite an extensive list of live shows with all their you know former and current um contacts of, mm -hmm. of band uh, we were a part of that and sponsored some of those events. Um, I believe, uh, what's his name? Um, Dickie Betts' son, Dwayne Betts. And, uh huh. Geez, I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of his name. He's one I of the guitar you. players, Southern guitar player, uh, Marcus King. Okay, oh, Marcus yeah, King. yeah. Uh -huh. Marcus King, Dwayne Betts, um, and all uh Dwayne Allman's son too okay yeah were, like they brought on some big names like yeah and um and I, around that time is when when we met so good for you for figuring out the technology we were talking earlier that yeah all, it was you know, a huge learning curve to be honest it really was between the live streams and and trying to make it sound good and look good it was a huge learning curve yeah I remember a lot of my friends were like joining in on the Zoom like DJ events or live yeah. events. And I think I was like resistant to it because I'm like, that's eh, just not the same, right? It's I, not. I, 
pop in to a few jam in the van uh streaming events and those were cool but um are you are you guys yearning to get back out there and like start start slamming oh, in the road yeah. right one thing I, yeah I'm go sorry, ahead go ahead buddy. i'm sorry man i was gonna say like one thing that that you mentioned is that there was a uh, musicians work hard right and i think a, a lot of people don't realize that you know Great. you're working in a coffee shop but you're doing that to support really like your real robust hard work creative expression and your passion and you know it's work too and and you spend a lot of time uh, writing music and practicing music and probably writing a song and then scrapping a song I'd imagine mm -hmm. and starting over and uh, it's definitely no rest for the wicked as a, as a mm -hmm. musician so no. and then true, nothing, yeah. not, nothing was getting done right Joey said but right. so how do you guys find or get back into that flow and like adapt and, and now like you're ready to get back out there on what, the what does that look like one of the things that, that I found really great from the downtime was getting to kind of refine my own personal creative process. You know, I, I got really into writing poetry over the last year or so, and um, I've kind of been working on a book of poetry, and it's really kind of helped my writing expand, and uh, it's kind of given me a different outlook on writing. Maybe maybe I'm less afraid of it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm less afraid to take risks and less afraid to just say something as opposed to trying to, you know, Sorry, there's somebody pulling into our driveway as, as, as opposed to trying to like, I don't know, get my point across of being worried about who I'm going to upset or, you know, th those sort of things. And, and uh, so I got, I got to get more in touch with that. And, uh, you know, I, I, we had kind of a personnel change in, in, the, in the band. So that also kind of took some wind out of the sails. And, uh, but we did get to like like we talked about earlier get onto some really great live streams and uh, and uh, through some really great organizations and meet some folks like like medicine box and, and you and and uh, that have really been supportive and uh, but the thing that I that I'm missing about live shows I think is just um, it's I don't know when you're scrolling through your Facebook feed and you're, and you're just people are just looking at shows it's just it's not enough of a thing you know what I mean yeah. it's not enough of a thing and you have to really be doing something weird you almost have to be doing something to really get attention you know and whereas if you're going out to a show you're getting ready you're you know depending on what you're doing you're pre-gaming and, and your you're, you're whole evening is revolved around this so you get there and you already have that momentum and that excitement behind you and and that is what's missing for me about live streams is because yeah you know that the people that are that aren't there sitting in the seats or, or standing in front of the stage just excited it right. makes it makes every note easier to play and it makes every note easier to sing and and it, may, it just makes it easy. It makes it, it doesn't make it easy, but it makes it, it makes me, and I can only speak for myself, it makes me so much more willing to give everything I have. Whereas, whereas, uh, you know, you, you can throw some energy out to a crowd and they'll throw it back to you, but you throw your energy at a cell phone and it feels really depleting. Mm. So it's really depleting because there's nothing really there to recharge you. Yeah. And well, like you said, it's, it's, um, I, I don't think that people realize how hard musicians work. I think that a lot of times people think like, oh, they get to play music. And I feel so blessed to be able yeah. to play music. I feel so lucky. Um, but it is a lot of hard work. And these days, a lot of people expect music for free. And mm -hmm. so the only way we made any sort of money was through touring. So, mm -hmm. and that was the only way recording music is so expensive. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's strange because we consume yeah. music for free too. So yeah. it's like, it's tough, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's uh, like, so when the live shows went, that was like, that was a, that, I think that was just, that was so hard. It was a big piece of us that was missing. And it was also made it so difficult to make more music because that was our only way that we were able to make music. So now that live shows are like finally starting to come back, I honestly feel a whole new, I feel more like myself and it's crazy. And I didn't, I feel like I was slowly kind of like depleting and there was this huge yeah. thing missing from my life. And now we have a we have our first live show on the books here in Nashville. Yeah, yeah and first show in a year, and um, I'm starting to feel like myself again. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, one thing that I was just thinking about when Joey was talking about the live shows, and 
and like the, the between a screen and your fans it's just kind of like blah but that live show um there's a there is this like synergy between you and your fans totally. it's this co-creation if you will yeah and that, that energy uh I mean, I played in a band in high school, but I'm nowhere near where you guys are, like touring and stuff. But I, I remember that feeling when your homies would just come and show up and you like look out and you'd be like, yo, he like homie, you know, Bob made it to the oh, show. Bob <laughs> does care. <laughs> my, my, my like math teacher's here, you know, right. and it was like that just amps you up. Right. It and does. you get into that good flow and maybe you're just you know hitting those notes and those tones just a lot more crisp and clean because you almost have something to prove and you want to put on that good show mm -hmm. so that i that's this is cool that we're talking about that because uh for if any other musicians djs artists writers out there i know that was a a, a big um struggle for so many people not to be you know even with fans not being able to go out and see their favorite bands play or mm -hmm. go yeah. on tour or w whatever people do i mean i'm a huge fish fan you know i i grew up touring with fish back in the 90s and early 2000s uh since i was like 15 and and they do the dinner in a movie on facebook and they they play an old show from they'll pick an old show from like 98 you know, Providence, 1998, they had to call a Coliseum. And they give the proceeds donations to a, a nonprofit, but it's just not the same. Cool. And yeah. you see all the fish fans are like, are you going to announce a summer tour or what? Like, yeah, what all doing even festivals, you know, all the festy kids and yeah, or like Burning Man. It, it's, it's a huge part of our life as a, the human experience. Music is such totally a big right. part of that. And um, that co-creation is- I love that. I love co-creation. Because yeah. the, the audience is such a big part of how the show goes. Like if you go to a show and there's an audience that you can just, and you can just feel their energy. And if you're, like you said, co-creating, I love that. There's just like nothing like it, that synergy there. And I think it's such a strong sense of community too. Um, mm. So yeah. It's yeah so community wise uh let's talk about that like you're in nashville you've been there for eight years both of you yeah so about yeah i guess eight. about eight years now crazy so that's yeah. definitely long enough to have a community of of people of homies of musicians Absolutely. Of musicians of fans what what is that community like in nashville i've never been oh it's cool i man. love it's to go to so nashville fun. It's so great, you know what I mean? We were actually, I was talking, we had a friend over last night who- We literally just had this literally conversation. Literally just telling me, <laughs> you know, telling the conversation. And, and this is not the first time this has happened to me where I meet someone and they're just super cool. And then they were like, yeah, man, let's sit down and play some music. And they just completely burn me on guitar. You know what I mean? Or as like, as a right, you know? And you see these guys or guys or girls and you're just like, what planet did you come from? You know, cause I know how hard I had to work, you know? So how hard did you work? You know what I mean? But the community is so great. It's a, it's. I feel like I before moving to Nashville, I always heard how it's so competitive, and you know, it's, it's yeah. a six year town or whatever. And and it's we just found a really, really great group of friends who are basically like our families here because we don't see our families. So like you know, when we want to feel community, when we want to feel connection, we hang out with you know our friends, and everybody is a musician and everybody is so collaborative like we all play shows together we all write together we all hang out we talk music we talk right. spirituality and it's just such a um real and we all grow together too like when we you know we we've, we've grown a lot as humans and we, we kind of have all done that together we've evolved together um because it's like yeah. a little fam family that we created and it's um they always say nashville is kind of like a small it's a big city but it's such a small town feel and everybody knows everybody and the musical community is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's it's uh to answer your question a little bit more like about about how the how the community is here. I I think what's great about Nashville, and I can't really speak for other communities, you know, like because the, my our scene is Nashville, but uh, it's not like cutthroat really. I mean, it might be in some circles, but it seems to be that the, the, most people are just. The competition is who can stay the closest to the craft 
of music making as opposed to who can get the most gigs or who can, you know what I mean? Like, like, cause there's, there's, there's plenty of gigs, especially with the internet, you know, Hang on a second. we live out in the country. So there's plenty of trucks. There's no shortage of trucks, but um, yeah. So it's, you know, how, how close can you stay to the craft? And like the competition is how, how much of yourself can you give to this? And like, like how, how, I, I don't know that, that that's that's really what I, what I gather from it you know what I mean it's just and, so and, many and creatives it, in one spot yeah and, and, and if that's not the case I'm just living in my own head I'm gonna stay there because it, it, you know what I mean it just like we told you you need to come out here yeah I'm gonna come out there my friend uh Aisha invited me to come out to Chattanooga okay uh, Chattanooga's great it's beautiful yeah I want to hang there but then I want to go up to the Grand Ole Opry yeah absolutely do so it first myself and the amazing you know musicianship that nashville has to offer and, and absolutely a lot of there's a lot of just amazing musicians there and joey i like what you said about like the true competition uh is is really sticking sticking to that craft and bringing it back to the beginning of the conversation where you said you were able to um you were able to kind of uh, redevelop your craft a little bit and uh, write more and be more poetic and uh, it's it's almost like way to use your time wisely and you know, maybe you knew that you know subconsciously that it's like this is a perfect opportunity for me to really dive deep into that craft of what I love so much and that's music and, and being a creative so um, what do you guys say should we play some music Let's do it. I think we have a question there for Let's do some questions. Um, I saw it briefly, but I think it was Elena Ulrich. No, she's. No? Oh. She's okay. yeah. Um, I got gotcha. you. I'll read the question. Okay, fantastic. Well, Calvin, you. It sounds like you know Calvin. Who's Calvin? We love Calvin. Calvin, Calvin and Ashley. That oh, that's a great example of some folks that we connected to, connected with via screen. That, and it's yeah, like gave us the support. Yeah, that, some support we needed. You know, um, it's been really cool. Uh, we haven't really done a lot of that, I think, before the pandemic, and that's been it's been so cool to get to know them and thank you connect for over music. Yeah. Well, Alana, did, I'm I I heard today taylor that you learned that alana has a pretty extensive musical background she worked in the music industry justin who's on the medicine box team as well was a music journalist back in the day and he's in okay music, like, really big names That's um, so cool. and alana's uh question here is awesome what is your dream gig and venue Ooh. Ooh, I really want to play Red Rocks in Colorado. Oh, yeah, that would just be really something. That's a big. That would be a big one for me. And honestly, the Ryman. It's like a the Ryman here in Nashville. It's just like a. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like a gem of a of a venue, and it's not even a huge venue. It's not like an arena or anything. But it's yeah. It's a, the, the more the more I, I mean when I first started out, it was like Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? Like like. <laughs> But you know what I mean? But but now, now like the more I get into it and the more I start to kind of like just enjoy the culture and the community, the more I just want to be a festival band. I just want to play festivals. Yeah. I just want to get hippied out, go play some festivals. It's just to a bunch of folks that are enjoying themselves, getting muddy and having fun. Yeah, that, that to me, that that's where it is for me, man. I love that stuff. Yeah. Have, have you played or, any? Or, or, like a, or like a tight knit rock club where everyone's in your face and like, you know what I mean? Like that, that type of stuff. That's just an energy that you just can't recreate anywhere else yeah like what'd you say have we played any festivals yeah yeah any festivals you have we yeah. played um Sunfest was one of my favorites that was one in florida master musicians um, fest in kentucky we're playing bristol rhythm and roots in september um what else have we played we played merle fest yeah we played we played a handful of festivals. and then, and then like so some, off, some off ones too like like there, there's like as, for as many festivals as, as the world knows about there's like a there's thousands of other ones that are going on in other towns and stuff yeah well i would like to make an introduction to my friend steve okay i'm rick he he puts on a lot of um 
he's been like the producer, event producer in Tahoe and Reno uh, uh -huh. for 15 years. And he knows music in and out and he would love your music. Um, cool. And he, you know, he's got his fingers in a lot of different pots and definitely okay. like festivals. And I think that would be a good connection for you guys. Yeah, I would love yeah, that. Love yeah, definitely connect. Calvin says, "Man, we miss festivals." <laughs> That's why I like uh, I know. doing these Zoom lives. Is when people are on, we can just kind of like have a conversation with the fans. Um, totally, Justin. Uh, so, what are current bands and musical developments that give you hope for the future? Ooh, that's a good question. I like that a lot. Ooh, uh, Yola Carter is a, is, is a big one. Yeah, Yola Carter is yeah. fantastic. She's, mm -hmm. a, she's a powerhouse, man. We met her at Americana Fest, and uh, she's just killing it. She's doing such a, she was she was nominated for a Grammy last year or something. But if you don't know her, check out definitely Yola Carter. Um, who else? Um, I'm trying to think of like new artists. Yeah, a, a lot of our influences are older. Like, you know, for example, I've, I've just become, over quarantine, I've just become like kind of like a, like a Who fanatic. I really love the Who. But who um, do you think is like the like new artists that give you hope for like the music? I really I, I've been walking around all day singing singing uh, some Boy and Bear is what I've yeah. been singing today all day. I, I I like that band. I really think they got something good going on. Boy and Bear is great. Um, man, well, some some of my favorite bands have disbanded. I think Dawes is doing a great job too. Dawes, Dawes. Dawes. Yeah. Oh, Brittany Howard. Brittany Howard. Brittany Howard's doing new some record good is stuff. so cool. Yeah. It's like it's it's like almost like a. It's, it's definitely rock and roll, but it's got this like new age funk thing going on. That's just like, you just, those, those, they were, I, I don't know, understand how, how everyone in a room could just be feeling it that hard at the same time. You know what I mean? You can just hear it. The yeah. That's a good my, question. My question would be to maybe follow up on that. Like, what are some, who are some of your influences like that you, still admire very much in your you know musical uh creative process and mm -hmm. like that that the, that the ones that like got you to play music in the first place like that sound i want to play guitar i want to sing i want to make music like that like, yeah for, 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 me, for me i i continue to find those people and that like the finding of of, of new well you know, like, for example, when I, whenever I was younger, I was always like, Led Zeppelin's weird. You know, whenever I was really little and I was like, I don't like the high voice thing. And then I got older and I was just like, then one day it just clicked. And then I was like, Led Zeppelin is God. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. And same thing happened to me with Neil Young. Like something about Neil Young wasn't clicking. And then all of a sudden one day yeah. it just did. It just did. And now I have a whole collection of Neil Young vinyl and like, you know, like that sort of stuff. And obviously like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and, like uh i mean boston's rad that sort of stuff yeah we're, yeah. we're obviously very influenced by like the 60s and 70s early 80s stuff um i just think that there's something so that's why that's why i liked the previous question because I, I do feel like there's a lot of great um music happening great popular music um but i just feel like it's such a different vibe than what it was in the, in the 60s and the 70s it's just different they look for different things yeah. um and so I, I like, you know, there are the few artists that are like, you know, giving people like us hope. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I mean like Fleetwood Mac, Grace Slick, Stevie Nicks, Melanie. Jeff's um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Those are, those just, um, we spend a lot of time listening to them and watching them. Um, I, I really, I really like, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of um, Richie Havens. He, he was the dude who the first yeah. guy to play. Uh, I don't know if a lot of folks know about Richie Havens, but he's the first dude to play at uh, Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah, he was. Uh, he wasn't even supposed to go on. He was supposed to go with a full band, but because of the uh, crowd at Woodstock, he could like the bands couldn't get in, so he had to just go on acoustically and started the entire thing. And personally, if you listen to Richie Havens' music, I think it set the tone for what Woodstock became. You know, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But uh, I, I can't. I can't do what he does. with guns blazing on that stage. He did. Mm -hmm. he, brought, he brought it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you brought yeah, it. amazing. Uh, yeah. I totally hear Neil Young and you, Joey. Neil Young is one of my favorites. My dad. Thanks, Play. Yeah, Neil Young is great. Yeah, my dad's a guitarist, uh, singer songwriter, and he, he sings Neil Young songs. And if you close your eyes, you might think Neil Young is in the living room. 
Oh, so, amazing. I love that's that. That's so great. That's man. special. Just to comment on that, man, like, uh, I think when it all kind of clicked for me, when I, all, when I, when I started uh, really allowing influence in, is when I realized that, you know, I was trying to figure out why is this good? And sometimes it just is good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's good because it just is great. And, and that, once I accepted that, like my influences, my doors just flew open and just influence after influence just started hitting me, you know what I mean? And instead of trying to overanalyze why I like it or, or what's going on here, you know what I mean? Which yeah. is, it's important it's some, to some degree, but I think it's, it's more important to just, to just like what you like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that, I think that's what makes a good musician, but also someone that can appreciate music. It's like, yeah, I don't, I'll listen to metal. I'll listen to folk jazz r&b mm -hmm. house rock and roll led zeppelin led zeppelin three joey uh, that's like i'll sit there and put my headphones on and listen to that album like straight through and be like i didn't remember that like guitar line that's that, awesome you know, i with, love with, those moments yeah plant like they had such a unison together um yeah. calvin asked here do you have any non-musical influences well, that's a great question I am very influenced and in um, spiritually, I, I try to put a lot of um, that into my songs and into my music. Um, so like mental health, self-care, spirituality, um, that is something that is very influential for me in my music for sure. Yeah, for, for me, I, uh, I am constantly reminded, you know, that it's important for me to get outside nature for sure yeah, get yeah. outside and just feel my feet on the ground yes. you know what i mean if, if i don't feel my feet on the ground i just feel like a head floating around <laughs> you know what i mean i just sort of feel like i'm, I'm, not, I'm not really anything you know I, I just it's hard it's hard to get attached to anything you know what i mean nature i feel like has always been a big part of our, yeah. our yeah. i don't know brand even when we were like a folk band yeah I, so I miss the water i used to spend a lot of time in the ocean when i lived in florida i, I miss the water a lot no <laughs> nature's uh that's a huge part of my life. And I love that. And just, yeah, make sure you get out in nature all the time. That no, yeah, nature is great. Um, health is important to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Justin, Justin asks, uh, but first, Taylor, um, sorry, Calvin had a great observation for Taylor. That's the largest <laughs> water bottle I've ever seen. Let's look at it. Can we just like, look at what it says on here? It's yeah. a motivational. It's a motivational water bottle. It's like, <laughs> there's water in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's Tennessee whiskey. Yep. Yeah, yeah right. It's right. all alcohol. <laughs> Keep chugging. You did it. You, you did, did it. it. <laughs> it's like the not Janis Joplin would have that full of Southern comfort. Right? Seriously. I'm uh, going hard. And Justin, great question. Uh, what do you hope to see change in music now that things are opening up again? And and what sort of direction would you like to see it take? That's a great question. Um, for me personally, I hope that um, as a fan, I mean, speaking even for myself, like I feel like a lot of times we took live music for granted. Um, and so I hope that people now that, you know, it was taken away for so long, I hope that people realize how special it is. And like, again, even speaking from like an audience point of view, um, there's really nothing else out there like a live show. And I hope that people realize how, yeah, how special that is. And I hope that people um, flock to shows. I hope that once we can all be together and I hope that the, all of the, the shows, I hope that independent musicians um, don't have to worry about whether there's gonna be people at their show because people are going to be so excited to go see a live show. Yeah. Um, that's that's my hope. What about you? Oh, man. I just I hope bell bottoms become cool again. <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> I, <laughs> I got plenty of those. But no, I, honestly, I mean, I'm I'm, start, I'm starting to see some changes in the industry just from like you know get, get talking yep. to people. I'm starting to see a lot of positive changes in the industry already that I would have liked to have hoped to see like when I first came to town. It seemed like the, you had to you had to almost like finagle your way in, you know, mm -hmm. or, or catch a break. Or like, yeah. which there's still a lot of that, but it seems now more so that if you do some homework on your end and feel and figure out what it takes to be promotable, 
then then people are willing to help you, which which mm-hmm. is awesome. As a, as opposed to like, I feel like it used to be a little more like, why should I help you? As yeah, opposed, you know, with, the industry is so not artist friendly at all. It's, but it's, it's becoming more artist friendly. Yeah. Like, like some of the people we've been talking to, I, I've almost kind of had to like take the chip off my shoulder. I almost didn't even realize I had one on there until people are like talking to us about our music, and we're just, I'm just kind of like, whoa, what do you want? You know what I mean? That, that that's kind of like the like the weird feeling. It, we're now it's kind of like well, we can just have a conversation about it. We can just talk. We can yeah. see what we can do for each other, or, or or see where we at least have mutual interests on anything, really. You know. And I hope that people are more open to different types of music. I think that there's so much incredible music out there with so many different influences, and I hope that we can get outside of the box of popular music yeah and i want everyone to get a kick-ass record player and i want everyone to wear the needle out on that thing so oh, yeah. uh, well speaking of records um we're giving one of those away today right yeah heck yeah uh, and we're gonna play some you're gonna play some music yeah you're gonna play any tunes from that record give us nope. a little <laughs> no? some new tunes. what are we gonna play we're gonna play some new tunes yeah we've been so ready to release new music and so we've just been playing our whole our live show it's on june 1st here in nashville and it's pretty much all unreleased stuff yeah which the, may yeah which we're excited about but. yeah this this too we so you you y'all kind of in, in a way went, went on our road trip with this and i know some folks paid attention to that and uh, this is this is this song that we we're gonna play for y'all as uh one that taylor wrote on, a, on, a, on our trip. Let me make sure I'm in tune here. It's pretty tuned with it. Yeah. There you go. That sounds good. <laughs> cool. This is called Wildfire. Crab hands. 
<laughs> thank you. I love that. That great harmony is beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That's a new one. You're ready. It is brand new one. Yeah, we wrote it in an airstream in New Mexico. Yes, I'm not gonna lie, we got a little teary eyed on that. Yes, that's what we want. We thought we were like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get them. <laughs> How do we make Brian cry today? <laughs> <laughs> Music does that. Mm -hmm. As it should. It feels good to cry. Would you excuse me while, while I get a, a drink? Sure. I'll be right back. <laughs> she doesn't share her water with you? Yeah. I can't, man. It's a private <laughs> stock. <laughs> then I won't know how much I drink. Yeah, great. Private, private Nashville. <laughs> you got the songbirds in the background. Just adding, I know. Adding some flair in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was that song called? Taylor. called wildfire. wildfire it was um yeah we, we i wrote it um in new mexico it was during we went like to colorado and everything and it was during the wildfires there um mm -hmm. so it kind of you know it has a deeper meaning but it, it was kind of interlaced with that as well it's crazy because i remember we, we went into colorado and everything was just like so foggy yeah that was so beautiful in colorado like i i had never seen it in caught any kind of sunsets in the west or anything well and i'm then, also talking about the devastating talking? wildfires but there was, it was still beautiful though it was still beautiful like often i mean obviously it's devastating but it, you know, a nice sunset still all that smoke adds to a uh it makes a nice sunset it's, it's like, very dramatic it was like, sorry to everyone who had to suffer for me to enjoy a sunset yeah um so uh, one more yeah let's do let's it do more. yeah do you want to do it currently? Or do you want to do I think I want to do uh, Every Secret. Oh. This is a tune that I wrote. Um, I wrote, actually, this is one of the last tunes that I wrote before we all moved out of the band house together. Uh, it's a song called Every Secret of the World. And... Um, <laughs> we're hoping to record it soon. I hope you like it. Up there on the ridge, a blue sky is turning, white clouds are rolling down the mountainside. The soft voice of a girl whispers so sweetly, will you come with me? I'd love to lay you down. And show me the way to the light beyond the day. Yeah, they show me what love is really worth. Where the skyline bends, then we find ourselves again. Knowing every secret of the world. Sunset showed his hand, and a wild wind moved swiftly through a calico like desert painted in blue. The markings on her skin, they were a fine place to begin, tracing every single line that she could stay. As they show me the way to the light beyond the day, yeah, they show me what love is really worth. Where the skyline bends, there we find ourselves again, knowing every secret of the world. 
him. Workbench radio, she walks down briefly as the evening comes. In turn to view a child worth dying for as both of them are reasons to live on and on and on as they show me the way to the light beyond the day yeah they show me what love is really worth where the sky Amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that was, Joey, you said you wrote that uh, in, before you moved out of the communal community band house? Yeah, I did. All right. I, I have some interpretations in the song. All right, man. Hit me Ooh. with it. But, you know, um, I'm into my own interpretations. I would. That's awesome. I would love uh, yeah, to hear your interpretation. Take it to the world. I mean, living in a in a community band house, you know, you know what everyone's up to and everyone's business, and you see things and observe things and uh, lines on the arm. Lines Is that like the markings on her skin. Markings on her skin. Yeah, that's uh, just uh, observing living with people and maybe. Yeah all those secrets of the world like either you want to know them or don't want to know them Dang. <laughs> like i gotta get out of here and get my own space and uh you know kind of a coming of age and adulthood and you know yeah. when you're living living with a lot of people and then it's like maybe it's time for me to go live with my lady or live by myself or totally just live with one other person or live with my cat or dog yeah or right yeah so, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's great. It was a, it was an intense time. It was a great time, but it was a, it was an intense time living with so many uh, different personalities and personalities. Everybody. Yeah. And everybody being in the same band together and working together and going on the road together and hanging out together. Yeah. And it's a lot. You know, it's it a is. Lot. And it's good that you guys are still, still at it. And I mean, that can make or break a lot of bands. Yeah, well, we, we, Joey and I have parted ways with the rest of the band. Um, that was another thing that had happened during quarantine. Yeah, still I'm actually um, going to see one of them later. Yeah, on. like no, friends. no bad blood or anything. Yeah. It was just, uh, I think the quarantine kind of had people rethinking, you know, their, yeah. their path. Yeah. Reprioritizing. Yeah. Sovereign in their own choices for themselves. Or... Yeah. We, we were all kind of buried in it, you know, like it's strange to think about like, uh, there's like yourself and then there's your own idea of yourself you know what i mean and then so I, I feel like living in a band living in the house with your band and being in a band and going on the road and coming back home it re it more so it, it almost reinforced the idea of yourself more than who you truly are and, and i think we all just needed to get back to our ourselves as individuals i love that that's a great note to leave with get back to yourself as individuals and you have uh, you have yourself and then you have your idea of yourself or, you know, as totally. I say, it's like character or, you know, or whatever, you know, conversations with your ego. Uh, that'll never. Mm -hmm. totally. You know? Absolutely. So way to make that clear to man with a record conversation with your ego. Right. <laughs> yeah. I could give you right. a whole slew of lyrics for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Where we've, we've reached our time. Um, and by so fast. On and on, but I think, Roanoke's going to be a huge part of the Medicine Box journey, and Medicine Box will be a huge part of the Roanoke's journey. And Absolutely. Love yeah, I love Medicine you. Box. Love you guys, man. Um, thank you so much for your support. It's good to see you and have you on here again, hear some new tunes. Um, but attendees are automatically entered for a free Roanoke t-shirt and vinyl, uh, as well as the full suite of our one cap products. That's a prize worth over $250. Uh, my stuff. contacts on there, Roanoke. Uh, is that the email that um, you get your bookings at? Just yes, as well. 
And then, of course, uh, if you're interested in our Wellness Muse program, Alana is behind the scenes there, and that's her uh, email. This all goes out on YouTube. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having us, and I'm so happy that we got to connect. Um, I love what you guys do. It, it fits so well with yeah. the way that I want to live and, and what I like to put into our music. Um, plant medicine, I, I think, is so important. Mental health is so important. Nature is so important. So I'm so happy that that we got to connect with y'all and you, you appreciate know, you guys very much. Yeah, you guys are doing awesome, awesome things. Thanks. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm blessed. Uh, I have a great team on medicine. You do, Hall. yeah. Everyone's great. We're all behind the mission. And that's hard to find. It's like it's like trying to find really good bandmates. You know, exactly. Like yeah. Good startup mates and. Hold on to them. All right, guys. Well, enjoy the rest of your day in Nashville. You too. Keep up the great work. Great to see you. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank Later, you, man. everybody. Cheers. Tuned in. Bye, Calvin. Bye, Calvin and Ashley. Bye, guys. <laughs>